Our passage today is out of John 10, uh, verses 1 through 10. And really, uh, the whole chapter is known for uh, two integral statements that Jesus makes uh, about who he is, his identity. Uh, in verses 1 through 10, he says, I am the gate, or other translations say, I am the door. And in verse 11 and following, he says, I am the good shepherd, both involving this imagery of sheep. We're going to look uh, primarily at verses 1 through 10 today. But I can't help it. i got to share this with you. Anytime I think of sheep, I go immediately to an experience uh, that I had uh, in my early 20s. In fact, it was the summer uh, that Jill and I met, and we were working out uh, in Wyoming. And one of the projects that we did uh, with this resort ministry that we were working with was to go and help a lady uh, on her ranch. Uh, she needed some things cleaned up. Uh, she was going through a difficult time and needed some other uh, support. And so we went with the pastor and worked out there and, and helped out uh, the best we could. What was unique about this situation is she had a pet sheep. And this sheep in particular lived in her house, uh, was treated much like you would think a, a house dog or a house cat, uh, an inside pet of that nature. And so my immediate image when I think of a sheep is the day I had spaghetti with a sheep because we were sitting there at the table and it was um, uh, some something like uh, spaghetti that we were eating and you would kind of have to dodge and move around as the sheep made its way uh, throughout the table and as you can probably imagine uh, some of our food was uh, was lined with uh, with wool and uh, that made for an interesting experience so I don't picture sheep without thinking about the day I ate spaghetti uh, with one obviously sheep and shepherding was a strong image in Jesus's teaching and his explanation of his identity because it was something that uh, the immediate culture uh, could quickly relate to. And though we might not have the uh, familiarity that his audience did uh, with sheep, we can kind of get the images uh, too. What's unique about John 10 is Jesus is coming from a perspective of his leadership, of who he, but also his identity. And so there's this kind of clash in, are the religious leaders of the Pharisees, are those the true leaders of Israel? Or is Jesus the promised Messiah? Is he the, the leader of Israel? What's interesting to me again about Jesus is he doesn't get as much involved in this debate on who is better or anything like that. He sticks to his identity, who he is, and he sticks to speaking to the sheep. So let us hear Jesus in his explanation of his identity, but also in his call to his sheep. Chapter 10 comes on the occasion of the healing of a blind man that we read about in John chapter 9. You'll remember the discussion from the disciples was, did this man sin or did his parents sin? Is that why he was born blind? And that echoes a theological fallacy that was prominent uh, during that time and unfortunately probably still uh, lingers a little bit today, uh, the idea that sin resulted uh, in the blindness. But Jesus says no one sinned here. What this opportunity is for, what this occasion is for, so that the glory of God, the presence of God can be seen. And so Jesus heals the man born blind. Then there is this discussion from the Pharisees on he, who healed you. And he said it was, the, the man said it was this man, Jesus. And they even bring his parents in and, throw them in the, and the parents say, all we can say is we've known him ever since he was born and he was blind and now he's not. And at the end of the chapter, there is the discussion and the, and the man gives a wonderful confession and testimony of Jesus. And he says, now this is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. That's a wonderful confession, and it's immediately dismissed by those particular religious leaders, and they cast him out of the temple. Now, in effect, what they're doing is casting him out of the community, and then here comes Jesus in chapter 10. And he begins immediately with an illustration, an illustration from shepherding that should be accessible to all of them. He talks about the sheep pen. Uh, now, this wasn't an elaborate structure. It would have been most likely made of stone and uh, square uh, out in the middle of the field. And the pen or the, or the, I'm sorry, that was the pen. The gate or the door was an opening where the sheep came in and out of. And the shepherd or sometimes a porter would lay across uh, that entrance to both protect the sheep and give the sheep uh, a natural boundary, an idea for, for coming in and out and protect them from uh, predators of those who might come 
uh, to steal the sheep. And sometimes there'd be multiple flocks uh, in there and a shepherd could walk into the pen and his sheep would come to him. And another shepherd would come and his sheep would come to him. But Jesus makes this little illustration of the sheep and the sheep gate and how robbers and thieves would come over the sides, but the shepherd uh, lay, uh, lays himself down at the gate and the sheep know in, when to come in and come out and the sheep know who their shepherd is. Uh, the immediate impact is not felt uh, by the Pharisees. There's a, in verse five, it says there's some misunderstanding there. So Jesus applies uh, this illustration and says very clearly, I am, I am the gate. I'm talking, when I'm giving you this illustration, I'm talking about me. All who have come before are robbers and thieves. And Ezekiel chapter 34, verse two through four, talks that God is addressing those leaders of Israel who lead the people astray. And the way that they lead them astray is that they seek, the leaders seek their own desires and they seek their own prominence and they seek gain for themselves. And so they're poor leaders, they're bad, uh, they're bad shepherds. So Jesus is picking up on that idea. Obviously, this imagery is throughout uh, the Bible. The most, again, familiar to us would be Psalm 23, uh, the, what God as the shepherd, uh, supplying the need and, su and supplying rest and comfort uh, to his sheep. And so Jesus is taking on that uh, idea. And then he gets to the summation of it, the illustration, the application, the summation of it in verses 9 and 10. Specifically, verse 10, he said, look, the thief, and this is a, a direct correlation to Satan, uh, but also to, to evil. The thief, evil, sin, comes to steal, to take the sheep, to kill, to slaughter the sheep, to destroy. But I have come, Jesus says, I have come that you might have life, that they might have life and some translations say have it to the fullest. Some say have it in abundance. It's a really interesting word. Uh, the word there, uh, the Greek word has peri in it. So we think of perimeter, but it, it directly translates and with the tense, I have come that they might continually have the all around life. So Jesus sets himself as the righteous, good leader, as the good shepherd, but not as the one who is off, one who is involved with the sheep, one who lays down, literally lays down his life for the sheep. We'll see that as well. He takes an opportunity to explain his identity, but also to talk to the sheep. Jesus as the gate welcomes the sheep in. Those who want to follow God, those who want to experience what God has, those who want to know God are welcomed in. We talked last week about the key Christian mark of hospitality. And we often think that is kind of a surface thing, but Jesus is getting to a deep meaning of welcoming of hospitality. And he is the gate, welcomes the sheep in. Jesus as the shepherd, as the gate, has the sheep's best interest in mind. Jesus has his followers' ultimate best interest in mind. Again, many of the religious leaders of the day were out for their own political gain, out for their own prominence, out to satisfy their own desires of power. And Jesus says, I, the gatekeeper, I, the sheep gate, want what's best for the sheep, ultimately to provide for their protection, uh, their comfort, their real comfort, their real needs. Psalm 23 again, where David says, I have all I want, I lack nothing. That's what the good shepherd provides. Beyond that, Jesus offers salvation. The sheep come in and they are saved. If, a, if the sheep gate is properly secured, if the shepherd is doing his job, those sheep will not be harmed. And so Jesus, in a very real sense, uses that illustration application to say, I have come, you might be saved. Jesus didn't come so that we can just have a good perspective on life. Jesus didn't only come so that positivity might abound. Jesus come, came that we might be saved. And then Jesus talks about ultimately the experience of the sheep. When he is the sheep gate, he has come to not just offer the sheep up to the whims and intentions of powerful negative motivations, but so that the sheep might have life 
and might have it all around them, might have it to its very fullest. A sheep that is well, ta- a sheep that is well taken care of and provided for roams freely. It might not have been best for the dinner guests, but that sheep in that lady's house uh, that I was talking about earlier, it was living its best life because it could go anywhere and, and do anything. And, and maybe there were some bounds being broken there. But within the boundaries of the pen and within the lush grass of the pasture, Jesus calls his sheep to a full free life. So I think the call of Christ to us today is, are we leading like Jesus? Are we leading with those who are following us with their ultimate best interest in mind? Are we leading in a way that is welcoming and that is loving and merciful? Are we leading whatever part we're leading? Are we leading in a way that points others to Christ, to ultimately to salvation in Christ? And then us as sheep, because wherever we lead, however we lead, whatever area we might lead in, we're only as good as what we're, who we're following. And so as we follow Christ, are we living the abundant life? Now there is offers from other shepherds that look that, of a life that looks good and that feels good and ultimately ends up in destruction. But there's a life that Christ offers that is not easy, that is not without rocks and hills and valleys, but that is ultimately freeing and is a life all around. Is there any part of your life that is not submitted to Christ and is not experiencing the freedom of Christ? Are you still living to try to let your good outweigh your bad so that you might please someone or something in order that you might be accepted? Jesus says, come first and then live. Don't live so that you can come, but come so that you might live. By grace, you have been saved. And in the mercy God calls us, Christ calls us, his sheep, to that abundant, full, all-around life. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for today. I thank you that you are the good shepherd. I think you are the sheep gate that has laid down your life so that we might have life. God, if there's anything that we are allowing, that anyone is allowing to steal the all-around life that you have called us to, God, may that be taken away and that we follow you. It's in Jesus' name, amen. In the end of the book of John, with still very much this picture in mind of Jesus as the shepherd, you'll remember that he says to Simon, if you love me, feed my sheep. Specifically in verse 16, he says, take care of my sheep. May we take care of one another. May we love one another as we are, have been loved. Grace and peace to you. Thank you so much.